RBGFM, locals talking to locals. And we welcome to our program this morning, Ben Knight. He's guardian, one of the guardians of the Kapiti Marine Reserve. Good morning, Ben. Oh, good morning, Nigel. How are you getting on there? Oh, I'm well, thanks. And you tell me you haven't been out for your swim this morning. That's a little unusual for you, isn't it? No, no. Yeah, the, the, the chilly winter weather seems to have bitten pretty early this year, so yeah. I'm hibernating. <laughs> Fair enough, too. I should imagine it's dropped the temperature of the water considerably in the last week. Well, I'm going to get out this weekend, and, and I'll let you know next week if you like. But, yeah, I suspect we might be back down to the sort of mid-teens, maybe yes. somewhere around 14 or 15 after that southerly in the water. Good. Now, I'm going to talk to you about uh, what I consider to be quite an innovative and a brilliant idea uh, in changing the old Raumati swimming pool to something that uh, you guardians of the Kapiti Marine Reserve have put into the long-term plan of the KCDC. Tell us about that, Ben. Yes, and I appreciate your support for the, the concept. Nigel, and I have to say, there's still just an idea or a proposal at this point, but essentially the, the former Raumati Pools building has been vacant since 2014, once the Coast and Aquatic Centre opened, um, it, it, was, it had served its purpose, and it's been mothballed ever since. Uh, and it's a perfect location for a marine education research and activity centre, or we think it is anyway. Um, we've been led to believe it still even has the original saltwater intake pipe from when it was an open-air uh, saltwater swimming pool way back in the day. Um, it had a new roof put on in 2010. It's got pretty good bones. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we're, we're really keen to work with KCDC to, uh, to develop this proposal um, through feasibility study stage and then um, hopefully on to actually doing it. Yes, you say, you know, education, research and activity centre, it would be a tourist attraction too, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. So I, I expect that we would be attracting um, domestic tourists uh, and school groups and that kind of thing as well from, from the whole lower North Island um, and also uh, people visiting Carpety Island, it's another option, another good reason to stick around for another day and enjoy what Carpety has to offer. So yeah, it's another, it's another uh, feather in our cap, if you like, as a community. Um, and, and from a Guardian's perspective, it's an opportunity to kind of give people a place that they can come to to learn about the values and the role that the reserve plays. And um, for the science community, it's a chance for them to communicate all of the work that they're doing in the space, whether it be Niwa, Victoria University, Waikato, DOC. They all have active marine research programs in and around the reserve. And it can become a showcase for all of that work as well and, and gives the community an opportunity to engage with what's happening out there, the work that's being done and the recovery that's underway within the reserve. Yes, I can see webcam has been there and just about have underwater cameras, couldn't you, to show what's happening under the water by standing inside the building? Yeah, that's right, Nigel. So the webcam network that we're developing for monitoring the reserve, all those images will be beamed into the centre. Um, we also, rather than going down the Kelly Towsons or Napier Aquarium route, which is a very expensive sort of facility to, to operate, we'd have smaller tanks, not walk-through style aquarium, um, and a virtual marine reserve experience, so either a virtual reality dome or a virtual reality headsets, so people can go on a virtual marine reserve dive. Um, they can do a virtual comparative dive where they compare the inside of the reserve and the fish life that's there with uh, what's outside of the reserve. And that approach, using technology um, to engage and communicate the values of that space, means we can change content really rapidly. So, as an example, humpback whales are going to start to migrate from uh, Antarctica, heading past through Cook Strait, past Kapiti Island, heading off to Tonga and Australia and other tropical locations they go for our winter. Uh, and at that time of the year, you could uh, have a virtual whale dive experience. So you can kind of keep updating the offering so that people come back for another experience rather than Kelly Towtons or a, or a Napier Aquarium. You've been there once, you've seen it pretty much. So this is about keeping the content changing, keeping it interesting. And the, the public education element of it would be about one third of the total package. We're talking um, with a variety of stakeholders in the tertiary uh, marine education space. So we could have some postgrad students doing their research out of this facility. And we're also looking at whether we can get aquaculture research or some other applied or commercial marine research, kind of like what NIWA does at Hunga Bay and Evans Bay in Wellington, um, operating in that space as well, because it's a big building, it's a huge asset, and at the moment it's um, it, it's sort of sad to see it down there <laughs> with with nothing going on when there's so much opportunity in such a great um, coastal space that it, that it 
that opens out to. I can see the KCDC saying, hey, well, where are we going to get the money from? But you you are going to consider not even thinking about asking the Cavity Coast District Council to supply a large a lot of money, just a, a lease on the building, because you can go yeah. out and get uh, supporters for this event. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, in, under the current um, fiscal uh, circumstances that the council finds itself in, it would be quite unrealistic to be expecting uh, any significant contribution from, from council coffers, from ratepayers. Um, we see this as an inward investment opportunity for council. So it's a sort of project where they, they own the asset, DOC owns the land, and, and really it's, it's, that, that's a huge contribution already. So if we can get a really reasonable uh, long-term lease on the, on the structure... Uh, we can then look at some external sources of funding. I mean, obviously Shane Jones has been quite interested in the economic development um, story in Carpeti, shall we say, in terms of the Air New Zealand flights and that whole conversation. Uh, there are regional and provincial growth and tourism funds. Um, we've looked at lotteries. They have a community facility development fund. So we think for getting the facility up to spec for the new purpose that we can find external funding and then um, the reason we're looking at these commercial agriculture or marine research and tertiary education utilisations of some of the space is so that we've got some solid income streams ongoing income streams that don't rely entirely on the foot traffic through the, the marine education centre, the front door if you like. So we want to look at a mix of, um, of income streams for the project to manage operating costs long term and we want to look at um, external sources of funding for the development of the site. So if you get the OK from the KCDC, when would you envisage starting this concept? Well, it really depends a little bit on the funders. Yes. So my understanding of some of the, the funds that uh, central government are, are administering is they've got a lot of cash to give away and they need to get that out quite quickly. I believe the Shane Jones fund is around about $27 million a week that he's having to dish out. Uh, don't quote me on it, but it's somewhere in that, that range. Um, so it gives you an idea of the scale of the of the work that they're doing. Um, and so I sort of see there's a couple of paths. If we found a funder that was just keen to jump on board, then we can move straight into a development phase, and then it could be 18 months to three years, and we'd be up and running, operating. Or we might go down a slightly more um, cautious path, if you like, and next steps in that case would be seeking some funding to get a professional to come in and do a feasibility study for us. And again, lotteries offer funding for feasibility studies for community facility development. So a feasibility study to really establish the business case is probably the most prudent path forward. Yes. But if there's an opportunity to accelerate the project, get things happening a bit quicker, then I'm certainly keen to have a look at that too. We've we've done quite a bit of legwork in terms of talking with educators, talking with schools, talking with community groups, looking at the other models that are in operation around the country. And, we, you know, I think the demand, uh, build it and they will come, I think, is the case for this particular project. Um, and so, yeah, we're, it's, we're just going to start where we are, though. We've got to cut the cloth to suit the budget, and we have to keep it at a community level. This is not going to be some kind of, you know, uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium. This is going to be something that's financially sustainable from day one, and doesn't require uh, lots of investment from council um, and offers huge opportunities for the Carpety Coast, Ramadi Village shops, the development around there, um, all of the education opportunities, other social and cultural benefits. It's, it's a great project for the, for the district. certainly is. And uh, I should imagine our councillor, Angela Buswell, might be very interested in this. She's going to put up a new website, isn't she? Destination Tourism Capity. So this is the sort of thing that she might be looking at. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Angela's been very supportive of the project and has been um, helping us to work through the nuts and bolts. Um, Angela's also a trustee with The Guardian, so she's been in that conversation from the very beginning. Ah, right. um, and, and to be honest, we've had a lot of support from councillors. There is concerns around how it can be funded, um, but coming from a business background myself, I've never thought, well, we'll just put our hand out to council and ask them to support this project. It has to be something that can sustain itself. And, um, and from an economic development perspective, uh, inward investment is the way to go. It's about growing the pot of gold that we've got on the Carpety Coast, not taking from what we've already got and spreading it around further. Maybe. But it's an asset, um, Nigel, if I could say, that, that in the draft long-term plan that's being um, open for public consultation at the moment, any work from KCDC on the building has been put off until 2026 to 2028. And I think that there's a huge 
risk for all of us if we have a building like that to literally falling down on our waterfront for another eight to ten years. So I'm, I think that um, it's a great time for us to be promoting our idea. But equally, if someone else has got a great idea for the building that can be self-sustaining and self-funding, then we need to be having that conversation because there's there's no other asset like that on the coast. And at the moment, um, there's an awesome restaurant and bar up above, which we would see being part of the package long term at that site. Um, but uh, there's a lot of opportunity that's at the moment sitting there um, not being fully utilised. And I think when you've got those financial constraints that the council has got, it makes good sense to, to, to make the most of the assets that we've got. Ben, we thank you very much for that uh, interesting talk and I'm sure that you're going to get a lot of support from the community and, uh, you know, as you say, once it's all sorted out, we'll hear more from you about it, but um, uh, sooner than later would be the way to go, I would suggest. That, that's right, Nigel, and if I could just quickly put in a, a little um, blurb for our... We're having a public meeting at Carpety Boat Club next Thursday, the 19th of April at 7pm. The chance for people to come along and hear a bit more detail about what the project is going to be looking like uh, in the facility there. And it'll be a chance for people to give us some feedback as well on the idea. So people want to get involved, want to support the project, come down to Carpety Boat Club next Thursday, uh, 19th of April at 7pm, and we'll um, hopefully see some of your listeners down there. Good on you. Thanks, Ben. Awesome. Thanks, Nigel. Ben Knight. He's the guardian of the Carpety Marine Reserve. 106.3 Beach FM.